again, everybody. Um, I'd just like to introduce you all to Jennifer Chu. Um, Jennifer is the psychologist at the Hearing and Balance Centre. Um, she works with the tinnitus clients and she's going to tell you a little bit about how she can help people with their tinnitus. Following that, we've got one of Jennifer's clients has kindly come all the way from Orange to tell you about her experience um, in managing her tinnitus. So I'll hand you over now to Jennifer. Hi, I'm Jennifer and I'm a clinical psychologist working here in Imbalance Centre. And a huge part of my job is seeing people with tinnitus. So today I'm going to spend a little bit of time talking about um, tinnitus, what this is, and um, the kind of management that we do um, in the therapy. So what is tinnitus? Tinnitus is, is experienced as noises, or most commonly a ringing sound in the ear or in the hand, when there's no such external source of sound. And some examples um, of tinnitus, um, the most common ringing sound, cicada sound, buzzing, whizzing, status sound, roaring, pulsing, whistling sounds. These sounds can all be called tinnitus. And um, for people who have never had tinnitus in their life, it's very hard to imagine that you have a sound that's in your head um, that happens pretty much all the time. For some people, it's infrequent. Um, sometimes, for some other people, it's constant. It's 24-7. Um, however, for people who have tinnitus, it's a very, very re real experience, and it can be very distressing as well. Now, causes of tinnitus. Um, there are several physiological causes of tinnitus. Um, wax against eardrum, tumour on the hearing nerve, Meniere's disease, ear infection, nerve damage, or exposure to loud sounds. These could all cause tinnitus. Um, psychologically, um, stress and anxiety have been associated with um, perception of tinnitus. However, some people who have none of the above mentioned conditions, but they heard tinnitus. And um, this is, um, sometimes people say tinnitus can be a sound of silence. And there has been a study done in the 50s, it's quite a classic um, study, it's done by Heller and Bergman. What they did is that they got 80 people 80 people, healthy people, no medical conditions, no history of tinnitus in their past. They got each one of them to go into a soundproof booth for five minutes each. And they told those people to go in there to you know, listen to sounds, if there's any, and come out and report sounds. Um, but in actual fact, those people went in there for five minutes of absolute silence. Guess what happens? Yeah? Some of them heard tinnitus. So actually, um, the outcome is that 93% of them came, in, came out reporting they heard ringing, hissing, buzzing, roaring, whistling, <laughs> a huge variety of sounds. And that is tinnitus. So this tells us that tinnitus could just be a, um, our body's um, compensatory response to a silent environment. So even though you don't have um, tumour on your hearing nerve, and uh, you don't have all these physical conditions, and you might be the most relaxed person in the world, you could still hear tinnitus. It can be a natural phenomenon. Now, when someone has tinnitus, um, and when someone has tinnitus and is bothered by tinnitus, usually they'll probably go to their GP to, 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 um, to be referred. Um, the GP may refer them to an audiologist to have their hearing test done. Um, or they may be referred to an ENT specialist to, to um, identify or to rule out any of the physical conditions that could underlie the tinnitus. Um, so, so far so good. Yeah. <laughs> However, a lot of people struggle to understand the idea of coming to see a psychologist for their tinnitus. Why a psychologist? Yeah? A 
and a lot of people say, coming to see a psychologist, that means, does that mean that um, my tinnitus is not real? Does that mean it's not a physiological condition? Does that mean that I'm making a big deal out of nothing? No. <laughs> um, what we know is that um, psychology plays a huge role in many physical things. In all of the medical conditions that we have, there will be a psychological component to it. Yeah? So when we see psychologists to try to um, be able to manage better with our condition, it does not mean that the, your condition is not real. Just to demonstrate how, how come um, psychology can play a huge role in, in physical things. Um, now, let me ask you a, a question. Think of hunger. Is it physical or is it psychological? 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 Yeah? <laughs> Both. That's true. Have you ever had the experience of um, having had much to eat for the whole day, but because you're nervous about something, you just, you just don't feel like eating? Yeah? You lost your appetite. Now another example, sleep. Is it psychological or is it physical? <laughs> Both. Both, yes, that's right. You probably had the experience of being really tired <coughs> physically, but because you're so worried about something, you can't fall asleep for the whole night. Yeah? So these examples tell us that psycho psychologically, it really it can play a huge role in how we feel physically. Make sense? Therefore, the focus of the therapy that we do is the management of tinnitus. The physiological cause of tinnitus, the information is really good to have, but it's actually not that important. Yeah? Um, it doesn't matter what, um, how your tinnitus was caused initially, because the approach in the therapy is the same. We can do something psychologically to help you to manage tinnitus better. Therefore, the focus of the therapy is not to eliminate or even to reduce the sound of tinnitus, is to help you to be able to cope with tinnitus better. So that tinnitus is something that um, is not something that drives you crazy or something that interferes with your day-to-day -day functioning. To achieve that, um, in the therapy we do two types of therapy. One is called tinnitus retraining therapy. And the second one is the cognitive behavior therapy. And I will explain them in detail. Now, tinnitus retraining therapy, or TRT. It provides a model that explains how our brain processes sounds. And that, in turn, gives us an insight of how our brain processes tinnitus. Now, we are exposed to all sorts of sounds in our everyday life. If I am to give you the task of listing out all the sounds that you have heard today, so far, do you think you'll be able to do it? It's, it you'll probably struggle with it, eh? Yeah? Because we hear an incredible amount of sounds every day. But you don't tend to um, dwell on them, you don't tend to uh, be aware of them. Yeah? A lot of sounds. For example, when you walk down the street, what do you hear? You hear traffic in distance, people talking, um, traffic sounds, uh, traffic light sounds, um, dogs walking by, people running, um, bird sound, the wind sounds. These sounds are in our background and they are very much there all the time. And because they don't really mean something to us, we don't seem to have that much awareness of them. We don't focus on them. Yeah? However, for sounds that mean something to you, your perception of the sound will be a lot more acute. And uh, one good example is the so-called cocktail party.